hey, we should start this. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Computer Studies Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Professor Elliot Person Thing, and this is my favorite student, um, Dan Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted to say like <laughs> Daniel <Danielle> Erico <laughs> <laughs> or something. You could give me in a lot of trouble. Favorite students true. and all that. So I didn't say it. Very cool. Well, welcome uh, this evening. We're doing something a little bit different. You'll notice we are not in Classroom G. We're not in my office. We're back in the computer lab. But there's just two of us. Yeah. As far as they know, there could be somebody hiding behind the camera. But Hi, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Don't yeah. make me cry. I'm sorry. Seth, we miss you. Anyway, uh, there's just two of us tonight. We're going to do a little bit of a different thing tonight. We're going to have a couple of videos coming out, uh, at least this one, probably a few more, where we do some tutorials for the games that we play. So those of you guys who are students at Emmaus and you say, well, I've never played Halo or I've never played Command and Conquer and I don't know how to play, so I'm not coming to your party because I don't want to play and I'm no fun. <laughs> you don't have to say that anymore because we're going to teach no you excuse. guys everything that you need to know. Um, we're going to start with Halo. We're going to do some basics. We'll do some map walkthroughs. We'll have some fun. Uh, so yeah, we're going to walk through some Halo in this uh, episode and then in future episodes we'll do some other games as well. Uh, I want to do some Artemis stations, you know, do a mm. focus little tutorial yep. on each of the Artemis stations. So just a bit of nomenclature for you guys. Uh, FPS stands for feet per... Wait, no. no, it's first person First person shooter. shooter, that's what it is. Not feet per second, but first person shooter. It classifies games where you take the role, the first person role of a shooter in the game. Halo is a very well-known first person shooter. We're going to be playing Halo 1 for this particular video a but, favorite yeah fan favorite for sure yeah, that sure way thing. you can see me uh there i am <laughs> so this is called blood gulch and uh it's one of the most classic maps oh, i yeah. think of all halo this was the first map that i ever saw being played if you're looking at the screen right now which since i'm editing the video i will probably make sure you're looking at the screen right now you'll notice that both of our screens are in the first person mode, which means that you don't get to see yourself. It's as though you're looking through the lens of the character in the video game. You see the gun, you see your hands in front of you. Can't see your feet though. So so you're moving around, you're basically using your W and S key to move forward and backward. So if I click S, I move backwards. If I move, oop. <laughs> That's because you just found a hole. <laughs> if I move, click W, I move forward. So a little, I, little bit of a problem, Dan. Yes. There's a big concrete block between you and me. Okay, like, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here I come. All right. W is forward. S is backwards. If I click A, I'll go left. If I click D, I'll go right. You'll notice that my perspective, the way that I'm facing, does not change just by moving these keys. This is very key. So essentially the keyboard keys are just moving your feet. It's just your feet. Yeah. Not where you look. But if I move my mouse and not my WASD keys, You'll notice I look around. You should put your hand up and wiggle your fingers. There so we you go. Know that you're not, you're not cheating. I look around, but I'm not moving. My feet aren't going anywhere, which you can't see. Yeah. But if I move with my WASD keys and move with my right hand, my mouse, you'll see I can move while still looking in different dire directions and change my momentum in that way. Holy cow! You just jumped. I did just jump. How do you do that? Spacebar. <gasps> Whoa, spacebar. We should note right now in this video that we are using the default Halo 1 controls. Yes. Which neither of us actually play with. So this can... might get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You, you can ch change your controls at any points. And in fact, if you get on a computer that someone was already playing on, they might have already changed them. You'll need to change them to something yourself. But Yeah, so real quick, cut to my screen. And yep. I'm going to show you, if you hit the escape key... The escape key will bring up the in-game menu, which allows you to do things like get out of the in-game menu by clicking the Zoom game, or go to the game options. Since I'm the host, I can change game options. Dan has that option grayed out on his. Uh, you can leave the game. So if you're losing terribly and you're just like, I can't take it anymore, you can leave. Not a very nice thing to do to your friends, though. So no. uh, usually you don't click that one. And then the change settings option, that's where you will have many, many options for changing the look, the feel, the sound, and the way that the game interacts. So control setup is where you want to go. 
there's a default button, so if you want to reset it back to the defaults, and if you want to peruse through here to see how do I do things, uh, you'll notice all of the key bindings, another key term there, mm -hmm. uh, key bindings are listed there in various categories. So I'm looking at movement right now, the WASD keys, which Dan just went over, are listed right there. Yep. You'll also notice look up, look down, look left, look right. Uh, they have question marks for the keyboard keys because they use uh, the mouse as your uh, as your key binding. Yes. So you I think it. WASD, I mean the movement keys, it doesn't really oh, mess crud. with much. <laughs> I just set my left button <laughs> to walk forward. <laughs> if you mess up your key bindings, click that default. All right, anyway, we were joking earlier about making key bindings really weird. Maybe we'll do that in another video. Mm. Nope. And then the actions like jump, crouch, uh, you can turn your flashlight on, which in the multiplayer does nothing. Besides give you away if you're coming around if the corner. You're, yeah, if you're in a dark So do room, that. So, yeah. Yes, go do that. Okay. Uh, scope, zoom, and then an action. Actions are like getting in and out of vehicles or picking up weapons. Pretty much anything you want your character to do and you're just sitting there yelling at your character, do something, <laughs> get the E key and it will do it for you. Okay, yes. sorry. So that was a quick little uh, deviation from what we were talking about. Key bindings there. Go ahead and say OK. Cancel out of that. And then resume the game. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Oh, there are vehicles on this map. There are. Yes. Okay. Um, Dan. So we know how to jump. We know how to move. We know how to look. We know how to look around. And really, just a quick note. So looking around is often very disorienting for people. They end up looking up at the sky and spinning in circles and things like that. It helps me to think of the reticle in the middle of the screen as a mouse pointer. Yep. And if I want to move that mouse pointer somewhere, I just move the mouse. Everybody's familiar with moving a mouse pointer across the screen. The weird thing here is that the mouse pointer doesn't move, the background does. But if you can train your brain to forget that and think of moving the reticle as though you're moving a mouse, you'll be a lot more accurate shot and you might actually do pretty well. At yes, sir. Yes. Should we talk about what these different things mean on the screen? Oh, that is a really good point. See, you know, I've been playing this game for 17 years now. Yep. I don't even see the things on the screen anymore. So. Nice. All right, so um, we're going to look at my screen because he has a bit of a weird weapon at the moment. But if you look in the top, <laughs> I would point with my mouse, but that just moves my camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, if you look at the top left-hand part of my screen. You'll I, will, see... I will put all of my editing skills to the max and I'll try and put a box around what you're talking about. That would be very impressive. I'll be, I'll be amazing. Yep. Um, you'll notice here though I have 16 and then like a times symbol and then like a little bullet. That means I have 16 bullets left in my... Um, I have 16 bullets I'm carrying on my person. And then directly below that you'll see there are actually four physical bullets on the screen there. And that means that I have four bullets loaded in my gun. So if I shoot one, you'll notice one goes dark all of a sudden. That means I now have three bullets, two bullets. And if I reload, which is the R button, it'll do a little animation. And I have all four bullets again. And you'll notice that your on person has now gone down as well. Exactly. Um, just to the top right of the bullets there, you'll notice a four and like a little circle symbol. That's how many grenades you have. You can throw a grenade by click right clicking. And hopefully I can hit Professor Elliot here by throwing a grenade. Um, oh boy, yeah, that's close. Yeah. That wasn't bad. Um, so yeah, so that's right click. Um, top right hand part of your screen, you will notice that you have like a little person with a color on him. That shows you what team you're on. So right now I'm on the red team. Professor Elliot is on the blue team, also noted by the color of what we he playing? is wearing. We're not actually playing teams. So those are just the colors that we are by default. Oh, okay. But yes, normally you're right. Normally that's the, where it would indicate If we're teams. playing team play, that's how you can tell what team you're on. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just kill everyone. Yeah. Um, top, top right-hand corner, you'll notice that I have my health bar there. Um, yep. That just went down, went down. So every shot that I get on him takes his shields down, and then once his shields are down, it starts taking out the health. Yep. Which is indicated by the smaller bars beneath. Now the shields regenerate, as you can see, they are now regenerating. The health does not, unless he turns around and goes and grabs the health back that's behind him. Which is back here uh, somewhere. But somewhere. I, won't, I won't go grab it now. Okay. Actually, no.
Okay. There it is. Yeah. There's your health pack. Health pack. You run over it? Yay, I have health. Unlike in modern games, Halo 1 has a fairly simplistic way of picking up ammo, grenades, and health. You simply walk over it and you pick it up. Yep. Uh, the only thing where that does not apply is weapons. You still have to actively pick up a weapon. You can't just run across it and expect your person to pick it up. Unless you have the same weapon in your hand as is on the ground. Then it'll pick up the ammo. It'll pick up the but ammo. it'll pick up the gun itself. Though yes. it will make the gun disappear if it's out of ammo. Yeah, so for example, right now I have in my hands the sniper rifle. If I walk over a sniper rifle, see, I just picked up two rounds. And because it still has ammo, it still shows it's up. It's still on the ground. So, uh, but, but otherwise you have to go up, like here's, where's the weapon? Here's a weapon. There you go. If I want to pick up this weapon, E. And you'll notice that the helpful little tip on the screen said, hold, hold E to swap. to swap for, and then it shows you a picture of the weapon, which is a, not as helpful as if it like, told you what the weapon was, because you got to look at it and say, is this a good weapon to pick up? Mm -hmm. How do you know if it's a good weapon to pick up? I oh, how? Yeah. Uh, y you learn. You learn. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that more, I think, when we do the, the map yeah, tutorials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can pick up grenades. Grenades, it's very easy. You just simply walk over them. I think I, yeah, I have the max grenades right now. So if I throw one or two, and yep. if I walk over this, you'll notice I picked up two, and there's only two left. Yep. The game can do math. Pretty cool. Yep. Dan, what's that green thing you're standing next to? Um, this is the green circle of death. If you walk through it, hey, Dan? turns out Dan? I, I, I teleported. Uh, so I'm halfway whoa, in the middle of the map now, which is kind of cool. So green teleporters, teleporters uh, in some maps are only one way. So for example, in this map where you come out on a little pad, they're only one way. There's other maps where you come out of another green portal, uh, in which case those are two ways. So you can go both uh, both ways through those guys. Yep. All right, All right. Uh, Dan, yes. this is a first person shooter. Yes. I think we should talk about we haven't even... the shooting aspect. Yes. <laughs> we've, got, we've thrown grenades, we've walked around, we've jumped. And I've shot uh, without actually saying how. Yeah. Would you like to do the honor since it's your favorite? Uh, well, see, the problem is you're too far away from my reticle to turn red, which is the thing that I kind of wanted to talk about next. Oh, okay. Here so, I'll I mean, granted. Yeah. Okay, right there. So if, if we look at my screen, you'll notice that I have a reticle or a crosshair in the middle of my screen that tells me where my bullets are going to hit. And if I put them on the person that I'm aiming at, I squeeze the trigger. Now I realize that the game is good enough, it does not always hit in exactly the same spot every time. There's a little bit of inaccuracy, inconsistency, and each weapon has a little bit of a different accuracy. Did you know there's a config file for that? I'm sure there is. Yeah. Can you change it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometime we'll talk about modding Halo 1. Anyway, so if I try and shoot right now, I actually did hit him, so he's close enough I can hit him. If I hit Z, which is my zoom, and for some reason the Halo 1 pistol has a 2x scope, which is pretty cool. Dan's sniper rifle, go ahead, has a 4 power and then a 10 power. Oh, a 2 and an 8. Yeah. 4 and 10 is a Halo 2 probably. Hmm. Or maybe I'm just completely it's fine. off it. Anyway, he's got a 2 and an 8, so he can zoom in nice and close. You'll notice that the reticle turns red when you are over the enemy. That's how you know that you're going to get a hit. If my reticle is blue and I squeeze the trigger, oops, blue, 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 you got a thread. Oh, sorry, I shot you one too many times in my example. I can shoot right over your shoulder. That's really important. <laughs> okay, so blue, it's not necessarily going to hit the person, and in most cases it won't, it won't actually hit. But as soon as it's red, that means that you'll actually get a hit. So if you're looking for a visual oh, indicator, just walked over grenades. If you're looking for a hey, visual nice. indicator as to when you should shoot, when your reticle turns red, you need to squeeze the trigger. Now, for many people whose hand-eye coordination is a little bit slower, maybe you're new to this game, that's kind of hard to click the button exactly when it turns red. You end up going a little bit beyond. So you might have to plan a little bit. There's a lot of marksmanship here as far as squeezing the trigger at the right time. But if you've ever shot a real gun, there's a lot of that too. Okay. Alright, so uh, now we know how to shoot, we know how to throw grenades. Should we talk about just some basic first person shooter tactics like what I'm doing right now? Absolutely. Jumping off the base. Jumping that's off the base. <laughs> that's not what I was doing. Alright, so uh, first thing that you need to know about a first person shooter and how to survive. Yep. Move. Don't stand still. Don't stand Ever. still. 
Okay, if I'm standing here, even if I'm lining up the perfect shot, as I'm lining up my perfect shot, Dan's going to be lining up the perfect shot, and he's also moving. I can't track this guy. And as you get better and better at Halo, or any first-person shooter, moving sideways and lining up a shot becomes very easy to do. Okay, uh, So staying moving is important. Now, if I am moving directly backwards from Dan, you'll notice that I stay inside of his reticle. And if I move directly towards Dan, again, stay right in his reticle, very easy shot for him to take and take me out. Instead, I want to be moving side to side while I'm moving away or towards him. Moving away from him, if he's got a close range weapon, can have a tactical advantage so that he's not as likely to hit me. Or if I have a short range weapon, maybe I want to move closer to him so that I have a better chance of hitting him. Something to note is if you're zoomed in with your scope and you get hit, can you shoot me in the knee real quick? Yep. If you're zoomed in and you get hit, it takes you out of zoom, which can be really frustrating if you're trying to line up that perfect shot. Especially and if somebody's hitting you with long just range the weapon. tiniest little bullets. So keep moving, always moving, always moving. We're moving. And if you can break up the pattern a little bit, that way it makes it a little bit harder for him to get the hands off. It is. So there I am, dancing, dancing away. Wonderful. So I will say, jumping, not the best tactical move. Because a jump, once your feet leave the ground, you are traveling in that direction. You can't Period. change until you land. Okay. Other tactics, Dan? Um, cover, obviously, yeah. is a pretty simple one, making sure you get behind, behind things. Um, you can see sometimes. Um, for example, Ooh, boy. that's not what I wanted, but that'll work. <laughs> if I were to shoot you, here, just stand still. Okay, get behind the bullet. Ah, bulletproof windshield. Ouch. Does this, here, if, like, if I come over here, will it say which, it, yeah, it'll, like if you shoot me from the side, it'll, yes. no, it'll show me which way the bullet is coming from that I got hit by. Let me see if it does it from behind. It'll so say which way. More of a direction for turning. Yep. Oh, hey, look. So now that I can see him, game. it's. We spent like 15 minutes on this already. <laughs> should we quick show how to get into a vehicle and be done? I think that we should say, see you in part two. But realize that there are a bunch of Halos out there. Halo. Uh, Combat Evolved was the first Halo came out 2000, 2001. Ancient. Uh, is really old at this point. This is 2018. Wow, 2018. 17 years ago. Which means that this game came out before some of our students were born. That's weird. Yikes. That's really weird. Yikes. You're making me feel old. Uh, nope. That wasn't in Halo 1. I think Halo 3 was the first one where you could see. Great game technology. I guess, I, I guess that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good so, for you, Halo. Uh, you should be able to see your shadow, but uh, not, not good lighting in this one. Yep. Okay. Actually, you, I can see your shadow. Can you see your shadow? Uh, if you look down... Uh, what is it? Six more weeks I, of winter? Yeah. I don't think you can see your Something shadow. Something like that. That's funny. I can totally see your shadow, but Weird. you can't see your own shadow. So Might be a setting thing. Very interesting. Cool. So anyway, this is a first-person shooter. We're going to talk just really quick about basic controls. I think yep. I've said that now four times. Let's actually talk about it. 